So in another video, we took a look at a cross-section of Earth where we had Earth's surface. Here's us standing on the surface, not to scale. And here's the core mantle boundary. So down here is the metallic core, which is mostly molten and very, very hot. And it's dumping heat, we'll just call that Q, into the lower part of the mantle. And so it heats up that lower part of the mantle, and it heats it up enough that it can be buoyant and it can rise due to thermal expansion. So if we have some given volume of material that looks like this, and that is the case when it is cold. If we heat it up, then it will expand into some larger volume. And so the hot case would be look, would look like this. If we have the same amount of material here, the same number of atoms or molecules of material, the density of this stuff is much lower. So the density of the hot material is much lower than the density of the cold material. And so the hot material will rise. So we have hot material that is rising upwards. And as it approaches the surface, it cools off, becomes more dense, and then sinks downwards. And we have what is a called a convection current, a convection cell. That convection current brings up hot material from deep inside the earth and that can cause melting. Let's erase the chalkboard and take a look at how we think that happens. So we'll <clears throat> plot temperature versus pressure with pressure going downwards. And let's say this is the mantle solidus here. So uh, mantle solidus. That is the temperature at which mantle peridotite or any other kind of mantle material uh, might begin melting. We're not going to put numbers on this, so we don't really care what the kind of material is. Could be peridotite or peroxinite or something else. So now let's plot the geotherm. A normal geotherm might look something like this, where we have a very shallow slope the way we've drawn this diagram here where we have the conductive lid, the lithosphere, and then it'll turn around and become very steep when we hit the convective geotherm. This should really be a straight and continuous curve, which is not so easy for me to draw. I'm not meaning it for it to change values down here. So this steep part, that is the convective geotherm. I'm just write it out. So that's the convective part of the mantle. Uh, geotherm, and then up here we have the conductive lid. So the conductive lid uh, would otherwise be known as the thermal lithosphere. So the thermal lithosphere is that part of the lithosphere, or that part of the earth, that conducts heat. So heat, Q, heat, is being uh, transferred by conduction Whereas over here, down here in the conductive mantle, heat is being transferred by convective flow. And these convective currents can rise up, but they hit the solid lid, and these convective currents then turn around and sink back downwards as they uh, release their heat into the lithosphere. But the lithosphere here is strong enough and rigid enough that it is not taking part in this convective mantle flow. So the way we've drawn it here, so here's the geotherm shown in red. The geotherm, the way we've drawn it here, is nowhere hotter than the mantle solidus. So the way we've drawn it here, there's no place where uh, we would have volcanic activity or partial melting. However, if we have hot material being dredged up from the base of the mantle, we might have a hotter geotherm. So let's draw another, ge we'll call this G1. Maybe we have a hotter geotherm at G2. It would be parallel. We would expect that it might rise at the same rate in terms of its uh, change in temperature with respect to pressure, but because it's hotter, bringing up hot material from the base of the mantle at the core mantle boundary, this hotter geotherm G2, so G2 generally has temperatures that are greater than G1, uh, might be hot enough that the geotherm here would exceed the mantle. And we think this is precisely what happens at places like Hawaii. So let's race the chalkboard again. If we take a look at a place like Hawaii or Yellowstone or another place where we talk about so-called ocean islands or mantle plumes, we have a very thick lithosphere, but if we have hot jets of mantle that are rising up from the core mantle boundary, 
then maybe these things are hot enough, this, this jet, these jets of mantle, these convective currents are hot enough, they can drive some partial melting and those melts can rise to the surface and give us a volcano. And so that would be the way we would explain material uh, that is erupting at some place like Hawaii or Yellowstone. Uh, or a, a number of other places, especially in the ocean basins, like uh, Samoa or the Galapagos. Uh, there are a lot of ocean islands that are not positioned anywhere near a uh, spreading ridge or a subduction zone. And those ocean islands, because they're far away from plate boundaries, uh, are easiest to explain by this so-called model of the mantle plume. So the mantle plume is this hot jet of material that's rising from the core mantle boundary, and we are causing, inducing partial melting in this model uh, by the theory that the core mantle boundary here contains excess heat compared to the rest of the mantle, and that excess heat is able to give us a hotter geotherm and then give us uh, enough melting to give us volcanoes such as in Hawaii. These ocean islands are common enough and important enough that they get their own name and their own acronym. We, uh, they are dominated by basalt, and we call them OIB for Ocean Island Basalt.